Oh, hello folks. It's uh, Ken David Stewart uh, back for Saturday evening edition of uh, of my Roswell 1947 play uh, video uh, podcast. Uh, I'd like to dedicate uh, tonight's show to the uh, students of uh, John Henderson in River East uh, Tr Transcona School Division and all the teachers and all the staff there. Had a good time there on Friday, uh, subbing uh, with the kids, so a big high for Mr. Stewart. Thumbs up. Now, let's get on with our play here. This is where we had Professor Stone and a bunch of archaeology students found this uh, plane crash or aircraft crash uh, out in the desert. It turned out to be a spaceship. Okay, two paramedics or a firefighter arrive on the scene. So this is a continuation from the opening acts. You were right, Frank. It's a plane crash, all right. Frank, wow, what a mess. Hi, boys. Did you find any survivors? Professor Stone, there appears to be only one survivor. Robert and Howie are trying to get him out of the cockpit. Act 2, Scene 2. Chris. Chris is one of the students. Wow! Two trained professionals to the rescue. Otis. Well, we're not real firefighters and paramedics exactly. We're only uh, volunteers. The mayor is too cheap to hire real professionals. Frank. Don't worry though, boys. Otis here is real good with a fire hose. And me, I watch ER on TV all the time. I should also mention that I passed grade 10 biology before I dropped out of high school. Another student, Howie, says, Well, that's good enough credentials for me. Can you guys do anything for a little guy here? He's having a real hard time breathing. No, that was the live alien they found. Otis, Whoa, this guy's weird. What the heck is he? Professor, I'll give you my professional opinion at a later time. This poor creature requires immediate medical attention. Frank, I'll go get the oxygen tank out of the ambulance. Otis. Frank, while you're there, I put some Jack Daniels in the glove compartment. Shot or two might relieve the creature's pain. Narrator. The alien gratefully takes the oxygen mask after taking a couple of big gulps off the Jack Daniels bottle and starts, starts with his deep breaths. After the space creature can breathe on his own, Otis and Frank both grab an arm and help him walk to the ambulance. Just as they are opening the door for the alien, a military jeep drives right up to them. A five-star general gets out of the jeep. And the five-star general is General Kane. General Kane, hold it right there, boys. Turn your patient over to me. Frank says, Sir, this creature needs to see a doctor immediately. Otis and me are going to take him over to the Roswell Hospital. General Kane. What? Are you guys hard of hearing? This creature is now the property of the U.S. Air Force. Professor Stone. Now hold on there, General. This poor creature is not your prisoner. He needs immediate medical attention. General Kane. Is that so? I recognize you. You're that professor I saw on the Discovery Channel last night. You're the old geezer who was out hunting for dinosaur bones. Now listen up, big head. You and your students didn't see anything unusual out here today. You saw nothing, you heard nothing. In fact, as far as you're concerned, today never even happened. If you people tell anyone about the crashed spacecraft or these aliens, they'll be looking for your bones in the desert. Now, do I make myself perfectly clear? Now we switch over to Act 3, Scene 1. Dusty says, could be one of those flying saucers I keep hearing about on the radio. Floyd. Buddy, you better get to the radio station right quick and tell them your story. Them radio people will probably pay you for real good for an interview. Mick says. Thanks for the tip, Floyd. I sure could use the money. About right about now, my old truck needs a lot of repairs. I'll be on my way to the radio station. Say hi to Aunt B for me. Act 3, Scene 2. 
Narrator, Mick rushes right into the control room at the radio station. The two DJs, Rick and Dwight, are still on the air. Mick says, Do you guys want to see proof of what those old guys at the general store were talking about? Rick, listeners, we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. As Rick and Dwight take off their headphones, Mick dumps the bag of shiny metallic objects all over their desk. Rick says, What's this stuff, Mick? Mick says, It's pieces of a flying saucer that landed on my ranch last night. Dwight says, Rick, this is the scoop of the century. Rick says, I know and will be the broadcasters who first broke the story. Dwight says, Rick, we'll end up on the Larry King Show. Rick, easy, Dwight. Rick says, Welcome back, loyal listeners. We've got a very special guest on today's show, local rancher Mick Russell. Dwight, that's right. Mick has an amazing story to tell us. Tell us what you found on your ranch last night, Mick. Mick says, well, I think one of them flying saucers crashed on my ranch last night. I just dumped a bag of its metal pieces here on uh, Rick and Dwight's desk. Narrator. Just as Mac starts telling his story, General Kane turns up the radio in his Jeep. General Kane. What's he talking about, Private Ends? Get this Jeep to the radio station on the double. We've got to shut this cowboy up before he starts a national panic. Private Ends. Don't worry, sir. I'll have us there in a flash. While Rick and Dwight are interviewing Mick Russell... General Kane smashes the glass window in the control room. Private N kicks in the door. Rick, the DJ, says, What's the meaning of this? We're on the air. Ignoring the two radio broadcasters, General Kane and Private Ends grab Mick by the arms and escort him out of the radio station. Next, they throw Mick into the back of an army truck they picked up on their way to the station. Rick, I would just like to tell let the people of Roswell, New Mexico, know that our guest, Mick Russell has just been hauled out of our control room by two military officers. I thought we had freedom of speech in this country. Dwight, yes, loyal listeners, this is indeed a da sad day for Roswell, New Mexico, and for the American people. Private Ends locks the door of the army truck shut. Mick is sitting in the pitch black dark near the back of the truck. Mick can't see anyone but he hears some labored breathing and deep moaning, as if someone is in terrible pain. Mick, who's in here? Man, it smells awful in here. I feel like I'm going to puke. After a long, bumpy ride, the army truck steps in front of the Roswell Hospital. Private Ends unlocks the door and helps Mick out of the back of the truck. Mick is just trembling and is drenched in perspiration. Obviously from the stress. Mick says, What are you guys doing to me? General Kane, shut up, Russell. Ends, take the surviving alien into the hospital. You bring Russell in. I'll get some of the orderlies to carry in the dead aliens. Mick turns around and sees the live alien getting hooked up to an os oxygen mask. Mick says, who the heck is that? Am I in some kind of a horror movie? General King pushes through the hospital doors while he helping the live alien inside. Private Ends is right behind him with Mick in handcuffs. General King, nurse, give Mr. Rustel here a shot of grade A horse tranquilizer. He's having a real bad day and I want him to take a nap. And call some orderlies. I need them to unload some bodies from our army truck. Nurse Carey. Aye, aye, General. Narrator. Nurse Carey calls for some orderlies over the intercom. As the orderlies arrive, Nurse Carey gives them their instructions. She tells Mick to lower his trousers and then gives him a needle in the buttocks. Within a few minutes, a few seconds, pardon me, Mick slumps to the floor. Two orderlies lift Mick onto a stretcher. General Kane. Orderlies, stick this man in the storage room. After I take care of business here, I'm taking him back to the Air Force, Air Force base for questioning. Narrator. 
While all this commotion is going on in the reception room, a doctor passes by and sees the live alien slumped in a chair. And... That's it for now, folks. That's as far as we're going to get for now with our story. Okay, thanks very much for uh, tuning in, and I have an updated episode coming up later. Thank you.